Sample problems of pain. Well, not actually pain. Look, we've got a nice little tree here to show us that everything that we're doing is based in nature, and in the end, we're all happy, prancing deer roaming through merry fields of hay. Except instead of a tree, it's really more like a stump with a radioactive green fro. I don't know where I am right now, so you're going to have to excuse all of this oddity. Anyway, let's move on to something that we're all a little more comfortable with, something that all makes us feel warm and fuzzy inside, and that, of course, is cat burgers. Tasty, delicious cat burgers. And because there is such a widespread public demand for cat burgers, I, an ever-aspiring entrepreneur, I make cat burgers, and I sell cat burgers, and then people nom the delicious cat burgers. And as any entrepreneur does, I have problems with cost and revenue and profit. And so here's what I'm trying to figure out today. I start off knowing that my cost of production is linear and has values in the following table. Ah, ah, okay, whew, better. All right, now here's the thing, people. Uh, often you're gonna see in the real world scenarios and even in future chapters, cost or revenue or profit that is far from linear and it's all curvy and stuff. So that's a good FYI thing to keep in mind, but everything that we're going to be doing in 1.4, that stuff is totally linear, and so you're not going to have to worry about the weirder, curvier stuff until maybe chapter 3 or 4. All right, now, my cost of production is linear. Linear! And this table gives some of the values. So the first question that we're asked is, what is the fixed cost and what's the variable cost? Well, you may or may not remember that fixed cost and variable cost mean, respectively, uh, slope of the line and also, whoops, I'm about to write that backwards, slope of the line and then also y-intercept of the line. So if you see a problem in 1.4 asking you about fixed cost or variable cost, the thing you actually want to start off with is just finding the equation of the line. So here we've got some values, and we also know that the cost of production is linear. So let's remember that over here we're trying to find the equation of the line. And to find the equation of a line, we only need two things, point and slope. Well, as far as points go, we got a whole bunch to choose from. Well, by whole bunch, I guess I mean three. Three is a whole bunch where I come from, people don't make fun of me. All right, so for a point, we can pick any of these points. Let's just pick this one because it's got the smallest numbers. And so let's go over here and say our point is 2 comma 16. All right, now we're going to need a slope. And for a slope, we've got an equation that looks like y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And so for this puppy, we actually need two different points. So we go back over here, and let's, for our second point, use 5 comma 25. So we can plug these into our slope formula. Um, our second point is going to be 5 comma 25, but we're only going to use that for the slope. And now when we compute this, we get y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and we get 9 over 3, and that is just 3 people. Don't know if you knew, but 9 divided by 3 is 3. It's a fact. All right, so we've got that our point is stuff, and that our slope is other stuff, and now we can plug this together. Our equation of a line looks like mx plus b. First, we're going to turn m into 3. And now we plug our point in to figure out the rest. 16 for y, 2 for x. Solving for b looks like this. So that's super easy, and the equation that you end up getting is y equals 3x plus 10. All right, let's hold on to that guy and bring it all the way back. We're bringing it all the way back, people, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, let's go over here. Wait a minute. Nope, not there. Let's go. Ooh, because huh, I don't know where I am. Okay, so we've got y equals 3x plus 10, and I'm going to write that as c of x equals 3x plus 10, just because we're talking about cost functions. So let's remember that. Okay, and then look at these little hints we wrote. Variable cost is just the same thing as slope. So variable cost is $3 per cat burger.
And fixed cost is the y-intercept. So in this case, fixed cost equals 10. And remember what that means is that it costs us $10 to get our organization set up before we even start making any cat burgers. So the cost of buying all the equipment and the cost of advertising and all of that stuff, the cost of doing everything necessary to make zero cats. That's our fixed cost. All right. So that's our fixed cost and variable cost. And again, you just want to find the equation of the line and then read the values off. Moving on, here's number two. I charge $5 per cat burger, and we want to find the revenue equation. Here, we just remember revenue equals price times quantity. And now, because we're given the price, we can just plug that puppy in. So it's going to be five times the quantity. And now, what are we using for the quantity? Well, here, the quantity is just x. If you remember the units that we used even up here, actually let's scroll all the way back up. When we had this table, x represents number of cat burgers, and c of x represents dollars, dollars, dollars. So because x is the number of cat burgers, we already have a name for quantity, and that name is just x. So our formula looks like r of x equals 5x. Five dollars charged for every cat burger, that's our revenue, no big deal. Squiggly line, and now let's move on to part B. Part B says, how many cats do I have to sell into merciless nomage? Uh, I assume we all know what that means. Before I break even. So this is where you remember two things. One, um, one, let's do some Roman numerals. Roman numerals are cool. One, profit equals revenue minus cost. And two, break even is precisely the statement that profit equals zero. So all this means is first we're going to find our profit function, and then we're going to set that puppy equal to zero and solve. Revenue is 5x. Cost was, man, I don't even remember what cost was. It was so long ago. 3x plus 10. Cost is 3x plus 10, so we're subtracting all of 3x plus 10. This is revenue. This is cost. Revenue minus cost equals profit. And if we simplify this puppy, we get 2x minus 10, because this minus sign distributes people. Make sure you know that. All right, so 2x minus 10 is the revenue function. Uh, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. 2x minus 10 is the profit function. And if we're trying to find break even, we're just going to set profit to 0. If we set profit to 0, that means we have 2x minus 10 equals 0. And if you solve that puppy for x, 2x equals 10 x equals 5. Okay, so we got the value x equals 5. Now let's go back and see what we're asked. What we're asked is, how many cats do I have to sell in order to break even? Well, x precisely means number of cat burgers. So actually our answer is just x equals 5, no big deal. Five cats. All right, moving on to number three. See, here's the deal, people. I like to do my own thing. I like to be a successful entrepreneur and do all sorts of things that make society a better place. Like, for example, make cat burgers. But sometimes the ASPCA gets on my butt and tries to push their unreasonable morality upon me. And so, sadly, I get arrested and go to jail. And once I'm in jail, I'm going to continue my entrepreneurial activities. So, of course, I sell cigarettes, which is the predominant unit of currency in prison. And you should know this in case you ever go to prison, which I hope all of you someday do. Now, when I'm making and selling cigarettes, I want to figure out, as always, what my revenue and costs look like. And maybe they look something like these graphs here. Uh, so, yeah, I got a little pretty revenue picture, a little pretty cost picture. And based on these graphs, I might be asked some questions. And here's the thing, people. Maybe ultimately I only care about profit. But profit is revenue minus cost. And so if I don't have a profit function or if I don't have functions for revenue and cost that I can use to make a profit function, then sometimes I still want to be able to say things about profit that just use graphs for revenue and cost. So for example, part A says find the break-even point on the graph. Break-even is where profit equals zero, but we don't have a profit graph here. All we have is revenue and cost. So what we got to remember is that profit equals revenue minus cost, and if profit equals zero, that really just means revenue minus cost equals zero. 
And that means the same thing as revenue equals cost. If revenue minus cost equals zero, that only happens when revenue and cost are equal. And so if we're trying to find the break even point, then it, since we don't have a graph of profit, all we have is revenue and cost, what we're looking for is where the revenue function and the cost function give the same value. And check it out, that's not hard at all. That's just that fancy schmancy point where they cross. So if we're trying to find the break even point and all we know is revenue and cost, it's just the point where those two lines cross. So that's got a certain x value, which is how many cats I need to sell in order to break even. And uh, it's going to have a certain y value, which is how much revenue slash how much cost I am making when I sell that many cats. And of course, this corresponds to the profit being zero. All right, dudes, that's cool, I suppose. Now let's focus on B. And B says, which is greater, the debt that I have when selling five cigarettes or the profit when selling 35? That can seem a little bit weird. So let's take a sec and make sure that we even understand this first part. The debt when selling five cigarettes. Well, actually, let's put in a five here because we don't already have one. Let's say that's five. And let's say that's 35. And now, dudes, the reason why I have debt when I'm selling five cigarettes is this. Profit equals revenue minus cost. And so look at what these Y values are. We can make up numbers for these two. Maybe this is like uh, 10 and maybe, maybe this is something like 60. So in this case, revenue minus cost. My revenue is 10 and my cost is 60. And so my profit equals negative 50. Even if we just make up plausible numbers for this crap that we see on the graph, we figure out that our profit is something like negative 50. And really what's going on is the fact that the cost function is vertically above the revenue function. The amount of money that I have to spend is bigger than the amount of money that I get in return. And so when x equals 5, when I'm selling 5 cat burgers, then it totally makes sense that I'm going to be in debt because my costs are more than my income. Now, kind of conversely, if you look at this whole x equals 35 business, and we go up, 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 then you can just see by looking at the graph that the blue revenue is vertically bigger than the red cost. And that means that when I sell 35 cigarettes, oh yeah, I said cat burgers last time, but we're on to cigarettes now. When I sell 35 cigarettes, then I'm making more money, my revenue is bigger than my cost, and so total, I actually have some profit to talk about. So if we look at B, this part that says debt when selling five cigarettes, profit when selling 35, hopefully that should make sense that I do have debt when selling five cigarettes. I do have profit when selling 35. And if we want to figure out which is more, all we really have to do is look at this difference. There's a whole lot more debt here than there is profit there. Just because over here on the left, that line is bigger. That difference is bigger than the difference over here on the right. And so end result, dudes, is that the answer is more debt. Crap. Well, that's it for today, people. Wait, is there anything under here? No, there's not. Just this horrible void. Void. Do not gaze upon it. And with that message, I leave you. Until later.